Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me today for something that I've been looking forward to for quite a long time. My first drive in the new C8 Corvette. Of course, this is now the eighth generation Corvette, but the first that has a mid-engine configuration. Today, we're out surrounded by some beautiful roads here in Nevada in the USA to take a look at this car. So we'll start off with a walk around of the Long Beach red car behind me, and then it will be time to drive it to see what it's like out on the roads. It's been about a year since the car was introduced, but it is time now to experience it myself to see what it's like, a first drive in the C8 Corvette. Look at this car sitting here then, a very good looking thing. And I make no secret of the fact that since it was introduced last summer at an event in California that I was lucky enough to attend, I've been interested myself in potentially having one as a future Schmimobile, maybe a car to have out here in the USA. Well, today is the time to drive it and to get a feel for what it is actually going to be like. Now, one of the particularly intriguing things is that these cars, the entry level specification, starts from just $60,000. To have this level of performance and the looks of a mid-engine supercar at that price point is just bonkers. Now this car in front of us costs 81,000. It's a higher level specification, the LT3 trim. It doesn't have the Z51 package, but it does come with a whole host of technology and the upgraded interior that we'll get to in a moment. But one of the things that I really quite like about this, being a guy who likes driving experiences and in particular the engines, is that this is the only current production series vehicle that has a naturally aspirated mid-engined V8, the only one, a 6.2 litre engine making 495 horsepower. And talking about that, let's come straight through. I'm going to grab the key so we can open up the engine bay, which is also a storage back here as well. Just pop that and have a look inside here. We've got the engine mounted low towards the back, a completely new thing. All previous Corvettes were front engine. The engine was up front now though, to enhance the driving dynamics, to move it on to the next stage, it's mounted back here, which is gonna give a completely different drive, connected to an eight speed dual clutch gearbox that they've created for the purpose. But another thing that you can do by the way, is this is a targa top. This roof panel can be unlatched and it can actually stow away back here. And also you can use this space for golf clubs, still the kind of industry measurement for the luggage space available. And you have a frunk uh, as well, a trunk up at the front. So a pretty practical take on the mid-engine supercar. Just to close this back down, it actually has soft close which is quite nice as well. To come around towards the other side, give you a few more performance numbers actually. Zero to 60 miles per hour from this, thanks to the 495 horsepower, the 470 pounds for the torque, that's about 637 newton meters. It's rear wheel drive, but it will still do with the Z51 package with the sportier tires. Zero to 60 miles an hour, and get this, 2.9 seconds. A 2.9 second car for that price point. It makes no sense. This car just slightly behind, just over three seconds with the all season tires on it instead. Um, what else do you have? Top speed, just shy of 200 miles an hour, plenty fast enough, no question about that. I love the dark red with the silver wheels, but check out the interior of a two while we're here. Have a look inside here. Really, really highly equipped. To give you a few kind of headline features, you've got configurable driving modes, including a Z mode button, You've got a 12 inch reconfigurable driver dashboard, eight inch infotainment screen. The rear view mirror is actually a camera here to help with visibility. You can flick it to a normal mode should you prefer. These are the GT2 seats, which offer a very sporty position uh, and are very comfortable, but also adjustable. Carbon fiber inlays, the Bose 14 speaker sound system. All of the interior is finished really, really nicely. So let me take a step inside to get this started up so that we can take a little listen to what it's like just here. So we've got the start engine button just round to this side but take a listen as the v8 comes into life yes it is a very very typical sound what you expect from the car we're out here though in kind of the middle of nowhere but surrounded by some very nice roads with the car i don't think this one has the performance exhaust on it but you do have your driving modes that you can toggle here so for example if we go towards the right we can actually put it up into the full track mode there where you get a different display and i'll show you through all of this in more detail later as well as some of the controls and various aspects that you have of the inside but just listen to it Sounds really, really good. So, what's it going to be like to drive? Is it a car I should be thinking about? Should we go out and take it for a little spin, see what it's all about? I think we should do this, let's go. To stress at this point, this is literally my first meter or yard at the wheel of the new Corvette. So let's pop it into drive. 
we'll keep it in tour mode. I've put it back into tour, the kind of normal driving mode, just to get started, and let's head on out. And I'm expecting this to be, well, if you drive it normally, to be a smooth, gentle, easy drive. It's a dual clutch gearbox, right? And we've got some quite nice tarmac here. So out onto the road, we are gonna go to get a first feel for what this car is like. So, that's all right. Obviously in tour mode, the valve's closed. This is, by the way, the performance exhaust that this car has. But you know what, I think actually I'm gonna put it straight up into, well, into sport mode for the time being, into manual, because one of the biggest things to me is the engine that this car has. To have a 6.2 liter V8, obviously it doesn't help in terms of the weight side of things. It's not the lightest car by any means, but it does more than make up for it with the amount of power that it has. And the shifts are good. They're very, very quick, very sharp. Obviously mid, mid rev band at the moment. There we go. Rumbly V8, which is exactly what you want, and I praise Corvette for managing to keep that in the car, for it still having an engine like that. Can you imagine what it's going to be like in the future models to come, the Z06, ZR1, whatever it might be, the different variations? So driving along then like this, great visibility, the front scuttle sits very low, you've got good uh, positioning indicators in terms of the wheel arches, the A-pillars are very narrow, which gives you good visibility, you've also got some sort of funny mirrors in terms of the view that you have towards the back and an odd shape out of them as well but obviously seeing over those very high rear arches that the car has drop it down a gear up towards the red line when you're in manual it won't auto upshift it will bang into the limiter it will however drop the gears obviously to preserve and save the engine so that you don't come to a stop uh, in some very very low gear like this though the steering wheel feels really cool i know squared off steering wheels have mixed reactions. Some people love them, some people hate them. I'm a big fan. It makes getting in and out slightly easier, having the squared off bottom. And let's face it, it looks really cool. Oh, that's a nice one coming towards us. Really cool. Now you can configure all of these settings. Let's say you want sport, but you want softer suspension, you can do it. You can change the brake feel, you can change the suspension, you can change all sorts of different things. I'm going to pop it though up into track mode, which we'll also be experiencing soon in anger out on the racetrack, where you've got a very, very cool display in front of you with the uh, horizontal rev counter, plus the head-up display changes as well. And when it comes to technology, <laughs> this car has a lot going for it. Things like the head-up display, the reversing camera, the nice Bose sound system. I'm actually amazed by how much it offers for the price point, because you don't normally see all of that. You know, it's got things like the telemetry data recorder in the infotainment system. It's got connected services. It's got kind of everything that you could want. Blind spot monitoring introduced for this car as well. I mean, just looking around, kind of trying to think a little bit. You can feel the shifts are slightly more aggressive in the uh, track setting as well. But track isn't over the top hardcore. I thought it might be a little bit more aggressive in feel in terms of the shifts than it is. Obviously, we're driving on near on perfect tarmac, which certainly helps with the ride quality, definitely. When they do launch the right-hand drive ones over in Europe, um, and particularly in the UK, we do not have roads that are, that are as smooth as this, so it's going to be quite a different um, feel out of the roads. This is very good. There's a weight to the steering as well when you're in track mode. You feel like you're pushing quite hard on the wheel, which obviously gives you more feedback. I presume on the track in a dynamic environment is going to make it feel quite connected and raw as well. You know what? In an era where you have all of these turbo engines, which just mute and dampen the sound of particularly European cars with regulations that mean that they can't make exciting noises, it is actually rather refreshing to be able to drive this. So first impressions here are pretty good. Well, with pretty empty roads around here, one thing that has to be tested, let's just come basically to a standstill for a moment. I'm not going to do a full launch, but let's just, I guess, come to a stop and then just go full throttle, see what it's like. And I tell you what, is pretty decently quick. There is a big punch from behind you. You can feel that engine right behind you pushing forwards. The sound feels really connected as well. It's it's quite a lot louder when you're up towards the top end than I would have expected, but in a very good way. In the way that you kind of expected that this car probably would if it was set up like this. These are amazing roads to be driving this car on, to get a first feel of it. And you know, I think the most important thing is it's at least what I expected it to be, if not more. I thought I might have things that I was instantly kind of picking apart. We had a few moments earlier where the gearbox was a little bit clunkier at slower speeds, but these are also pre-production cars. These are some of the earlier tested car testing cars, as opposed to customer specifications, which are gonna be arriving very, very shortly. So I presume those kind of things come down to software that will all be worked out. But driving this, I mean, it really puts down that power, and we're not 
on the Sport Cup 2s and stickier tyres at all, yet it still manages to haul like this. Okay, so let's just turn it down a notch for a moment. Let's go back into, with the selector here, into tour mode. And there is a little bit of lag on the dashboard. It takes a moment to think about what it's doing and to change between the different driving modes. Press the manual button and it will drop back into drive, the eight-speed auto box doing its thing. It changes the priorities. You get a speedo in front of you instead of the rev counter um, selector and you get a lot of different bits of information that you can change and, and cycle through and display on here. Um, obviously making life uh, quite nice if you like playing with these things and want to see specific things uh, up on your dashboard. Cruising along here now, it just transforms into a to an easy riding, very gentle car. Like completely transforms. The steering is a little bit lighter. The ride is very soft. It's quiet. You've got a pretty decent amount of space inside the car. And of course, don't forget, you can take off the roof. You can undo the latch and just lift off that roof and pop it into the uh, into the boot, as we say, um, the trunk, the storage space at the back. So this is this is kind of first impressions, and they are very positive. With this amazing scenery all around, we've just pulled over because we're going to take the roof off and to do so, because it's a bit of a two-person operation, I am joined today by Matt Moran Motoring. What's up guys? Having a good day? Absolutely. Enjoying driving this, how can you not? So, there's a bit of a process to this. Let's um, talk through it a little bit. The door handles, by the way, are just under here. Open that up. What you've got to do is remove or open three latches. So these up here, you open the sun visors, then you've got these ones at the front, he says. And then there is that one also at the back, a little catch at the front, it opens up. Then we need to open up the rear luggage space because it will be stored away in here, he says. There's another one drives straight past. It's gonna go basically into these, uh, into these holders. So we're gonna try and do this. I'm a bit one-handed, but open it up and then we're gonna pass you that. You got it? Yep. Perfect. And that can then be housed and stowed away literally inside here. So let me uh, take this side of it, delicately pop this into the back where it should, sit straight in, clicks down this, with a soft close. I really like that. And then we can take a step back inside here and continue our drive. Thanks for your help, Matt. Absolutely. Nice and easy. Yeah, not too bad. And uh, yeah. Oh yeah. That's cool, much isn't better. It? <laughs> much better. That's also a very nice view. Right, onwards, let's continue. The beauty of this then, back into drive, into manual, first gear, out onto an empty road, clear in front of us. And, uh, yeah. Oh, nice snap on the shift. It is quite blustery in here. There's a lot of wind noise. I'm not going to lie about that being a target top. The way you can hear it kind of off the uh, backboard behind you. But open air experience, and this is in all Corvettes. There is also the retractable hardtop version for a few thousand dollars more. That will be coming a couple of months later that we saw the introduction of uh, towards the end of last year. But this is every car, open top motoring, all the glory of the V8, good times. We've come to a stop point so it is time to go through a few more details and I've parked the car the other way around so that we can take a look at the rear of it which many people have commented is very Camaro-esque in its design but of course another product family also coming from Chevrolet that is not all that surprising. I quite like the different shapes, the way you've got the 3D styling to the tail lights, down at the back you've got the twin exhaust tips on each side mounted right down towards the bottom. I think it's a generally good looking car. I have one slightly funny angle with it towards here, this rear quarter, rear fender that you have over the side of the car but that is of course all to fit in the luggage space and also to house the engine back there too. But to come back to the interior, there is a lot more in here still to discuss and show. I did briefly show you the key earlier, but I've just got that in my pocket at the moment so that you can see both sides of it. You've got the Corvette uh, flag symbol there and you've got a few different controls. I think you can actually start it from the key. So you press that twice and then hold it and it burbles into life. How cool is that? We don't get those features over in Europe, but something I quite like about the car. Anyway, stepping inside, actually, before we do, the seats, the GT2 seats I mentioned earlier. You've got some carbon fiber here beneath the uh, headrest. Very, very nice seats. There's a whole different choice you can have with the contrast stitching. You can have different seat belt colors. You can have six different interior options. There are 12 standard exterior paint colors. Lots and lots of configurable specification, as you'd probably expect, like the Stingray uh, door sill steps that you have. A little bit of storage. These are the buttons for the front and rear. You've got an electronic door release button as opposed to a traditional handle. There is a backup release down below. For some reason, the electronics aren't functioning. 
but to step inside where please do excuse the uh, sunlight I think we probably have to give a press of the button just to wake the screens up which we can just about make out um, here the central screen just coming alive ah yes you've got to press the brake to start um, and then bring it fully into life a new process for me to learn but here in front of us then we've got the main dashboard currently I think in the tour mode the toggle sits just underneath this armrest so you've got this kind of palm rest just here which is quite nice and then you've got the toggle selector underneath that which you can go out through the different modes so that's into sport you could hear the valves opening one more and we go up into the track mode where you get that very very sporty display now one cool thing about this is down towards the left side where you've got the oil pressure and temperatures and things these actually change color to notify you of a warning so in your peripheral vision you'll spot if there are any problems and you need to cool the car down a little bit more you also have here the z mode or z mode button which you can press and it will take you straight to your predetermined configuration and exactly how you want to have the car uh, and how you set that up that is not the only custom configuration mode because also in here if you turn it down you have my mode as well so you have my mode and z mode which are both configurable and then you have weather for icy conditions and all of these have the various appropriate settings that go with them depending how you've got it set up in sport though you can just hear it getting a little bit louder going on there you've got a few other buttons favorites volume your controls to go through here and to go through the performance data recorder um, and to go through lap times and g-forces and all of those kind of things on the left you've got your cruise control paddle shifters slightly wrapped around the back but have a nice feel to them quite a soft kind of spongy almost click on the back um, your light stalk your wipers stalk and then you come over to the infotainment screen now as the driver you can't really see the home button and the volume toggle they're quite difficult but then I guess you do have them on the steering wheel if we do go home you can see in here how you've got a whole host of different things you've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto installed you've got apps you've got OnStar services you've got SOS functionality you've got the PDR personal data recorder which is where it has and uses the cameras to record your tracks and you can add new tracks and configure this um, and it will save obviously the video overlay over your lap time and track data take it back home users audio and then your main kind of home screen with some tiles you do notice there's a small little lag it's not particularly slow but just takes a, a moment sometimes to think about what's going on now we get to something that i'm not the biggest fan of and i talked about this when i saw the car the first time the hvac controls this brace it does strengthen the car there is a functional reason for it but i find it really hard to work out where the different buttons are you've got your temperature controls you've got heated seats and cooled seats which is always very nice the driver buttons up towards the top sync auto uh, direction fan speeds everything you'd expect your window heaters um, and then the passenger controls down here but it impedes on the passenger's legroom if you're sitting in the passenger side your knee is basically resting on the inside of this so it's very much driver focused which is the objective to be fair that is the whole point this is supposed to be a driver's car so that is why it is done like that next to it you've got the two cup holders decent space or if you've got nothing in there obviously you can cover it up and just looks a, a little bit tidier in front you've got your park reverse neutral drive and manual toggle which are done in quite an innovative way and it's very easy to maneuver the car very tight turning circle very easy to press the various buttons and you know this just works pretty neatly in front of those you've got the traction control the front nose lifter lifts up the nose by 40 millimeters it's about what an inch and two thirds or so just to help clear anything any difficult things at the front and then you've got the front camera as well if you need to load that up which again loads very very quickly and the cameras in here it has to be said all work really really nicely I guess you can go back home including that one which I like a lot like I said you can flick this and go into a normal mirror view where you can see backwards or you can have the camera um, literally showing us exactly what is happening behind another thing i quite like are the air vent controls this little toggle in the center feels really nice in fact all the materials the fit and finish is very very solid the leathers are all really nice all these toggles are nice the buttons to open the glove box it's all done to a very high standard that's really quite impressive and just a generally a cool design over the dashboard over the instrument cluster you got your memory seat controls here yeah, can't really fault it uh, on the interior at all. And then behind, just to continue further back down the central tunnel, there's a storage bucket with some USB ports. You've got a wireless charging pad uh, spot just in here, beneath the Corvette Stingray badged uh, speaker behind. Now what we did notice driving was that you get a lot of wind noise. I think it's particularly through the uh, mounting pins and just the wind coming into this area behind the cabins. So above about 40, 45 miles an hour, the wind really, really did uh, start to pick up. But let me just, hit the button turn the car off for a moment press here to open the door uh, we step I'm just going to show you the front storage we've got some bags in there but just to have a quick look at how much space there is that is available 
no secondary latch, it just lifts up. It's a little bit of space. We've got two backpacks, rucksacks, not gonna fit anything huge, but easy day-to-day -day storage. And then to close this down, just give it a press and click it down into place. So yes, look at this car with the low sun on it, looking stunning. This color is really, really nice. Long Beach red with the silver wheels, the red calipers. Interesting fact, by the way, due to the weight balance, 60, 40, 60% 60 of that is at the rear. There are actually larger brakes at the back than at the front. You can have a brake upgrade, but still they would always be slightly larger at the back, which is quite an unusual thing for this kind of car. Anyway, what a first drive. What an experience, what an opportunity to get to check out the new C8 Corvette. A first drive here at the media event out based from Las Vegas, Nevada in the USA. And I tell you what, I mean, saving the best till last. This is really, really grabbing my fancy. What you get for the money with this car, $81,000 for a car that punches this hard. There are a few small things here and there, but that's an incredibly impressive car. There is no surprise that they're building 30,000 or so a year. The first year is completely sold out. No surprise at all. This is a brilliant thing for the money. A very, very impressive driving experience. So thank you very much to Corvette for the opportunity to come out here to drive the car. Thank you to you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do be subscribed for plenty more to come in the future. But for now, that is all. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.